It's January 18th here in Korea, and you've tuned in to Arirang News. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Athletes from South and North Korea will march side by side at the opening ceremony of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. And the two countries will also field a joint women's ice hockey team in a sign of thawing relations between the two Koreas after a year of escalating tensions over the North's nuclear development. Now, amid the ongoing Olympic talks, top diplomats from around the world have agreed during their meeting in Vancouver to continue imposing sanctions on North Korea and press the regime to denuclearize. But before we get started on that, let's first connect to Devin Whiting at the News Center for a quick look at what's making the news at this hour. Devin. Hi, ji -yoon. Well, the Bank of Korea has raised its growth forecast for the country this year to 3 percent, a performance that would be just about as good as last year's. Also, in a widely expected move, the BOK has decided to keep its key interest rate steady at 1.5 percent. Kim hye sung has the details. The Bank of Korea raised its growth forecast for the local economy for 2018 to 3 percent, up a tenth of a percentage point from its previous projection made in October. Global economic growth has accelerated in both advanced and emerging economies. Korea's domestic economy is expected to continue its solid growth on the back of strong exports and improving consumption, although investment has somewhat slowed. The central bank lowered its consumer price projection by 0.1 percentage points to 1.7 percent. It says there are upside and downside risks for inflation. Rising global oil prices are pushing prices up, while the Korean won's rise against the U.S. dollar to its strongest level in more than three years is starting to weigh on import costs. With December's core inflation rate below the bank's target of 2 percent and household debt still growing, the BOK kept its benchmark interest rate unchanged at 1.5 percent Thursday. This widely expected freeze comes after the bank's first rate hike in over six years in November. The central bank is likely to raise rates gradually this year, sometime in the second quarter or later, after policymakers have had more time to assess the impact of the first increase and get clearer signals on the inflation rate. Kim hye Arirang News. Prime Minister Lee Na-yeon was briefed today by two government ministries on their plans for this year to create more jobs, better jobs and raise incomes in line with the Moon administration's so-called people-centered policies. To put a number on it, a major goal is to get per capita income up to $30,000 a year. Kim ji explains. Five government offices, including the Ministry of Employment and Labor and the Ministry of SMEs and Startups, have outlined their action plans for the year to Prime Minister Lee na -gyeon. In a briefing Thursday, the officials said their focus will be on bolstering the government's growth initiatives to boost quality of life and achieve an income level of 30,000 U.S. dollars per capita. The ministry is also pledged to work toward increasing the number of small and medium-sized businesses to help create new jobs. We'll expand the $2.8 billion job creation fund for small businesses with 30 employees or less in order to reduce their burden from the government's minimum wage increase this year. Other steps include bridging the income and inequality gap between regular employees and subcontractors, increasing the number of quality jobs and strengthening monitoring of employers to ensure they carry out this year's minimum wage increase. To do that, the Labor Ministry says they'll unveil a series of measures this year, including providing support to boost youth employment rates, as well as promote the use of paid maternity leave. The Health Ministry says it'll raise the monthly basic pension fund and increase support for those in the low-income bracket, the disabled and the elderly. The Agriculture Ministry says it aims to boost the number of jobs in the agricultural sector to 170,000 by 2022 through increased convergence with advanced IT and biotech, such as smart farms. The Oceans and Fisheries Ministry says it aims to boost the number of jobs and revitalize the country's shipping and shipbuilding industry through massive infrastructure policies to open up an era where annual income of fisheries households surpasses $467,000. Kim ji Arirang News. Meanwhile, South Korea and the United States held a so-called 2 plus 2 meeting on Wednesday involving both countries' vice ministers of foreign affairs and defense. 
Washington reaffirmed its security commitment to Seoul, and the South Korean officials promised to closely cooperate with the U.S. on its ongoing dialogue with North Korea. Oh Jung-hee reports. Despite the current thaw in relations between the two Koreas, there will be no let-up in the U.S. show of force on the Korean Peninsula and in Northeast Asia. That's what the senior defense and foreign affairs officials of South Korea and the U.S. agreed upon on Wednesday at a 2 plus 2 meeting in Washington. It was the second meeting of the extended deterrence strategy and consultation group involving Seoul's vice defense minister Seo Ju Seok and vice foreign minister Im Sung Nam and their American counterparts David Trachtenberg and Thomas Shannon. The U.S. officials reaffirmed Washington's firm security commitment to South Korea using all categories of its military capabilities. The U.S. will also continue the rotational deployment of its strategic assets to South Korea and other areas, as long as North Korea's nuclear and missile programs threaten the region. They agreed on peacefully and diplomatically solving the North Korea issue through an unwavering deterrence on Pyongyang, and South Korea promised to closely communicate with the U.S. on its ongoing talks with North Korea. The meeting was regularized in summit talks last June and was held for the first time in September. Oh jung Arirang News. In other news, Inter International Airport's state-of-the-art second terminal has begun, begun receiving its first travelers today, just in time for the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Four major airlines, including Korean Air, will be flying in and out of Terminal 2. And passengers using the airport are reminded to double-check which terminal their flight departs from. Cha Sang-mi explains. Korea's main gateway, Incheon International Airport, opened its new passenger terminal on Thursday morning. Incheon International Airport Corporation and the Transport Ministry have advised airlines to mark the boarding terminal in red on passengers' tickets to help avoid confusion. Terminal 2 will host four Sky Team airlines, Korean Air, Delta, Air France and KLM. And Terminal 1 will operate 86 other carriers, including Asiana Airlines, T-Way and Easter Jet. The separation of operating airlines is designed to consider the terminal's capacity, boarding convenience and operating efficiency. Directions to the airport have also changed. When driving, the roads separate at the airport entrance junction, but both terminals can be approached from the airport Newtown junction as well. And in case passengers arrive at the wrong terminal, there are shuttle buses and trains that connect the two terminals. The terminal is designed to be easy and convenient for passengers to use. We have built an all-inclusive transportation center at Terminal 2 that connects users to buses, subways and KTX trains from indoors. Passengers can take public transportation conveniently without having to leave the terminal. But passengers need to take into account the time required to travel between terminals, as the shuttle bus between the two terminals takes 15 minutes from Terminal 1 to Terminal 2, and 18 minutes going the other way. The new terminal is easy to reach using public transportation, as the airport limousine buses, airport railroad and KTX have all extended their operation to Terminal 2. Terminal 2 has opened just in time for the upcoming Pyeongchang Olympics, which begin in three weeks. And the new terminal will help the airport in its push to be a top global air hub long after the sporting event. Cha sang Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting, and those are your news headlines for this hour. So in just over three weeks, the world is going to witness a monumental moment for the two Koreas, South and North Korea marching together under one flag. During yesterday's vice minister level meeting, the two Koreas have agreed to walk hand in hand at next month's Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, while also becoming one on the ice hockey rink. And before we sit down with an expert to talk more about this, our Ji Myung-gil gives us an overview of yesterday's inter-Korea talks. The two Koreas have decided to jointly enter the opening ceremony as one team at next month's Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Both South and North Korean delegations will hold the unified Korean flag, which shows the Korean Peninsula as they jointly march in. In addition, a joint women's ice hockey team will be formed and the details of this decision will be ironed out with the International Olympic Committee. 
North Korea will send a cheering squad of 230 people to the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, and they will cheer for both the South and North Korean teams. South and North Korean cheering squads will also do joint performances. The North will also send a 30-member Taekwondo team to perform in Pyeongchang and the South Korean capital of Seoul, with the dates yet to be announced. North Korea also agreed to send a group of journalists, while South Korea agreed to provide support in their coverage of the Games. The North Korean delegation of athletes will arrive in South Korea on February 1st, while the cheering squad, Taekwondo demonstration team and journalists will do so on February 7th. They will all use the Gyeongui line train route as a means of transportation to get into South Korea. Prior to the Games, Seoul will send an inspection team on January 23rd to the 25th, while Pyongyang will send an on-site inspection team on January 25th through the 27th. This comes as the two Koreas agree to jointly prepare and hold cultural events in North Korea's Mount Kumgang Resort before the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, as well as conduct joint training among ski athletes at the Mashingnyang Ski Resort in North Korea. As for the Paralympic Games in Pyeongchang, the North will send representatives, athletes, cheering squad, art performers and journalists, totaling 150 people. Further details are expected to be discussed through the inter-Korean communication channel in Panmunjom. Now the two Koreas plan to discuss the results of Wednesday's talks with the International Olympic Committee on Saturday, January 20th in Lausanne, Switzerland. Kim young Arirang News. And to tell us more about yesterday's meeting between the two Koreas, as well as a look at the Vancouver meeting on North Korea, Lee Sung-hyun, a research fellow and North Korea expert at the Sejong Institute, joins us in the studio today. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. All right, so some of the main points that the two sides agreed on yesterday were the joint entrance of the two Koreas during the opening ceremony, as well as a unified women's ice hockey team. Now, uh, how would you assess yesterday's meeting, as well as the agreements that were made during it? Well, to be fair, uh, this marks a real breakthrough in inter-Korean relations after years of frosty relations that everyone knows about. Mm. Uh, so this is a really good start. Um, and I think uh, uh, particularly some of the, the uh, items that you just mentioned, uh, jointly marching at the opening ceremony, um, joint cultural gala at Mount Gumgang, which is located inside North Korea. Mm -hmm. Also joint training at uh, Mashingyong Ski Resort, mm. which is a, a also uh, located in North Korea. These three aspects are also a uh, very good uh, improvement about this uh, uh, the talks. And also interestingly, these items are also a pledge by President Moon Jae-in when he was a presidential candidate mm. a year ago. So he also gets a uh, bonus credit for uh, realizing this. Having said that, I think we are in a very uh, delicate uh, moment in terms of inter-Korean relations. Um, it's like a balloon. Mm. Uh, balloon. We want to make the balloon, this inter-Korean reconciliation, make it bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But balloon can lose steam and become smaller. Mm -hmm. Or balloon can burst right. and pop up and uh, disappear. So it's very important that we take good care of current process together with the cooperation with the international community. Mm, to put in just the right amount of air in that balloon. That's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, the North Korean media were also quick to report on this, but they didn't really mention the joint entrance or the women's uh, unified women's joint uh, ice hockey team. Why so? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think there is an uh, uh, arms wrestling of uh, between two couriers who takes the initiative. Uh, no, even though it is held, the Olympics held in South Korea, but North Korea on their own perspective wants to portray that this is our event. We take the initiative and the jointly marching together is, uh, look at the visual, there is a huge South Korean delegation athletes marching and North Korea is uh, kind of additional uh, 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 in augmentation mm. to the big South Korean uh, athlete. That looks not very good picture to uh, North Korean uh, audience. Mm. Also, uh, uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, 
the, the joint ice hockey team, there is just a, a few North Korean athletes were added to. So it's not uh, North Korea wants to be the main star, but these two uh, uh, events, North Korea is actually not the main star. Mm. They, they are not on the limelight. Mm. So I think they want to uh, de de emphasize uh, the, these aspects while highlighting the you know, huge uh, cheering squad or something like that. Mm, all right. Well, uh, I know you mentioned this a little bit a little while ago, but the two Koreas agreed uh, to train their skiers on the Bashingyang Ski Resort, and also a cultural event will be held at Mount Kumgang uh, before the Olympics. So, what significance does this carry? Well, I think uh, from North Korean perspective, I think North Korea is aiming at this as a weapons of mass destruction. Mm. of soft power. Okay. From North Korean perspective, uh, you know, there was uh, uh, tensions building up on the Korean Peninsula, even on the brink of a war. Now they are entering a dialogue stage. They want to touch, touch the hearts and minds of a global audience to improve North Korea's international image. Uh, also, uh, uh, Burnish North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's uh, global status. Mm. So I think uh, how we should respond to North Korean strategy is also important. I think we're, it's good, okay, for us to give North Korea a chance to improve its uh, image strategy, uh, let them play along with their own strategy, mm. but then this is a strategy of a soft power in disguise. I think the homework from South Korea and also uh, international community is how we can make, transform this image politics into a real improvement about the situation on the Korean Peninsula right now. Hmm. Now, a lot of attention has also been on how the North delegation will travel to the South for the Olympics. Right, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, this is, not a simple issue, even though it sounds simple, just mm. travel, go and right. participate. But then there is an international sanctions impose a travel ban. North Korean athletes cannot travel by air. International uh, 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 sanctions don't allow it. If they, are not, they cannot travel by uh, cruise ship mm. by ocean, South Korea's own sanctions don't allow it. So the only remaining option is the land, land. route. Mm. Uh, route. But then this is also interesting. Another interesting aspect is that they are uh, dividing into uh, three different uh, groups, delegations uh, entering South Korea uh, from three different paths. DMZ, the Panmunjom, and also the uh, western uh, uh, coast area that leads to the uh, Kaesong Industrial Complex. Mm -hmm. Also on the eastern side that leads to the Mount Kumgang. So these three land routes used to be the three major channels of uh, people exchange between uh, two couriers. Mm. So these are all opened up again. This is a major thaw, and this is very uh, political, uh, huge, has a huge political symbol of importance. Mm. Now there's also attention on how big of a delegation that North Korea will send, and also eyes are on what uh, high-ranking officials will be making their way to the south. So who can we expect on this front? Well, uh, two aspects. Uh, I mean, I just watched the news this morning and uh, the number of delegation, uh, delegates are increasing. Mm -hmm. Now it's about uh, probably around 400. Oh, that's okay. big. Mm -hmm. And half of them, uh, 230 people are cheering squads. It kind of show, reveals North Korea's intentions. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, soft power, uh, uh, touch the hearts and minds of people. Remember 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, when North Korean cheering squad, beautiful uh, young ladies came here, people were hooked. Yeah. Uh, it's a little attraction in a sense, even though North Korea as a state developed nuclear weapons, but when they saw the cheering squad, people were, oh, North Korea also has this yeah. side, mm -hmm. human side as well. So it's uh, good that North Korea tries to uh, improve its uh, image, but then we want to see the real change about North Korea's uh, uh, strategy. Second aspect about who's coming here, not just athletes or art performers or cheering squad, mm -hmm. but we also have a keen interest to see who are the political uh, uh, delegates. Uh, probably, you know, they, they have not announced, but it's good that if they can send the number two uh, rank, 
Choi Ryong Hae. Mm -hmm. Why? Because U.S. is sending uh, its chief delegate Mike Pence. That he is a vice president. So number two, U.S. is sending number two. So if Choi Ryong Hae, number two mm -hmm. person from North Korea, also attends this uh, event, then there will be a very natural meeting between the two very important uh, 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 political figures between North Korea and also United States, which might lead to a uh, uh, deeper level of negotiation dialogue between uh, North Korea and the United States. Secondly, uh, finally, I think uh, even though uh, you know, there are a lot of speculation about whether Trump will send his daughter Ivanka, mm. and uh, I really hope that Trump sends her to the PyeongChang Winter Olympics as well, yeah. because if that is the case, then North Korea is thinking about uh, sending Kim Yo-jong, mm. Kim Jong-un's uh, uh, younger sister. Right. And if that is the case, then we Seoul could also send a signal to Beijing to uh, Xi Jinping, China's leader also has a daughter, Xi mm. She And these people are all the daughters of leaders and uh, a fa a loyal family. They are all in their 20s and 30s. So it's, it could be a really a uh, cultural diplomacy happening uh, among these uh, countries. So we'll see who comes, and uh, I have a lot of expectations on this issue. All right, me too. Now, I mean, it's all good to see that the talks between the two Koreas over the Olympics are sailing smoothly, but at the same time, I, I think we can't help but to wonder. The North hasn't discussed much about other non-Olympics related issues, including the potential military talks between the two Koreas, as well as other issues surrounding the Korean Peninsula. That's a good uh, point that should be addressed. Uh, there are, I think, three aspects about this round of uh, inter-Korean dialogue. One is, as you mentioned, uh, you know, Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. The other two are military talks mm. and also ways of resolving the current North Korean nuclear issue. I think North Korea at this moment is all making an all-out effort to focus on Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games while putting aside more meaty or more difficult or challenging items of topics, uh, military talks, and also the, uh, the North Korean nuclear issue. Why? I think uh, this issue also touches upon uh, the attitude of the United States, mm. while inter-Korean relations help, uh, but I think North Korea is also uh, keeping an eye on the attitude of the United States, and this is an issue that North Korea also has to talk and negotiate with the United States. And I think that's why they are putting aside and while focusing on the PyeongChang Olympics uh, for the moment. Hmm. Now, amid the ongoing Olympics talks, uh, top diplomats from around the world gathered in Vancouver to talk about North Korea and its nuclear ambitions. And their joint statement said that they will continue to impose sanctions on the regime to make it give up its uh, nuclear ambitions. But at the same time, it said that they do support dialogue between the two Koreas to reduce tensions on the Korean Peninsula. So what can we make of this statement? Well, I think it, uh, as even the international media highlighted the sanctions aspect, but I think the real message is international community supports the inter-Korean dialogue and uh, uh, wish success of the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. Also, important message is international community is like-minded in supporting to resolve the North Korean issue mm. through, not by uh, nuclear weapons, but through dialogue and negotiations. I think this is the spirit of this Vancouver meeting mm. that I think some of the media underestimated. All right, then what do you think North Korea's response will be to the outcome of the Vancouver meeting? I think North Korea already responded. They are upset about mm. this. Uh, but that I think North Korea, and I think North Korea also has an analyst. Uh, there are about seven or eight uh, aspects to the st uh, statement that came from uh, Vancouver meetings. But the primary aspect is that uh, the Washington and like-minded countries, their primary goal is to resolve this uh, North Korean nuclear issue through dialogue and negotiation. Mm -hmm. And sanctions are not the goal by themselves, but sanctions are means to pressure North Korea, so then North Korea will be more willing to come to the dialogue. Mm. This is the logic of the uh, statement. So North Korean analysts should read very carefully what the main aspect of that joint statement is. All right. Well, a lot to keep our eyes on the developments surrounding North Korea as well as the Olympics with less than 22 or 25 days to go until the Olympics. So thank you so much for your insight today. Well, thank you.
And that wraps it up for today. But we'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place with more of the day's top news stories and a closer look at ongoing issues here in Korea. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and goodbye.